Yep, we're on. Okay. This is my co-worker um, and friend, Arlen Beachy. How long have you been in Thailand, Arlen? Um, three years now. And he's not really famous, but I think he does something important for people in Chiang Mai, and especially something important for a lot of volunteer teachers who come to teach English here in Thailand and throughout Southeast Asia. Arlen is an English teacher, and he's also a TESOL instructor. He helps uh, volunteer teachers learn how to teach English better. <clears throat> What's the name of the organization you work for? IGO, the Institute for Global Opportunities. Okay, IGO. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd like to ask Arlen about two things today, about his experience teaching English and things he's learned, and then his experience as a TESOL instructor, and maybe learn some things from him about what makes a good English teacher. So Arlen, uh, what kind of experience have you had teaching English? Most of my time has been spent at uh, English Center teaching conversational English in the evenings. Okay, now English Center, what do you mean by an English Center? Uh, we run classes for um, mostly high school age students and up and teach basic conversation. Okay. Um, Focusing heavy on speaking and listening and that sort of thing. Okay. And your experience as a TESOL instructor then? <clears throat> Can you tell me some about that? Well, the organization we work with brings um, roughly 20 to 30 students over um, each year in order to, um, for missions training. And part of their missions training uh, is a lot of, they do a lot of TESOL a lot of English teaching on short-term trips. Okay. Um, the organization doesn't want to send them out unequipped, so it's my job to equip them to go out and use English teaching in their short-term trips. Okay. Why do you think being trained as an English instructor is so important? I mean, I speak English, I speak pretty well, sometimes too well. Why should I have training to teach something that I already know? Because knowing and teaching are two different things. You're possessing information and knowing how to actually impart it in a useful way. Um, knowing how to facilitate good English speaking in a classroom is something that's learned. Facilitate good English speaking in a classroom. So you've moved from like teaching it to facilitating the speaking of it in a classroom. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like most of our focus is on conversation, so speaking and listening activities. What we find with students in Thailand is they come through school learning English, um, learning a lot of grammar and reading abilities, but they come through that, some of them graduate high school, some of them even university, and have no ability to actually communicate in the language. Sure, and that's, that's the whole goal of language learning, right? To right. communicate. Right. So our job is to teach or review enough of what they do know to equip them to be able to converse in a given situation, whether they're going to a restaurant or the post office. So, so let's back up and to the, the task of the teacher who's teaching conversational <coughs> English. You say, if I understand you correctly, the job is to not necessarily to teach grammar and writing, but to facilitate conversation happening. Mm -hmm. How do they do that well? To do it well um, requires that the students actually end up doing more of the speaking during the class than the teacher does. Some teachers would go so far as to say if a student isn't speaking, they're not actually learning. I see. Um, but to get them as much practice as possible with an, alongside a native speaker, sometimes in conversation with a native mm -hmm. speaker, um, provides them with the kind of setup and guidance to simulate a real a real life situation. Um, they can, like I said before, they possess a lot of knowledge in their head, but don't know how to put it out in actual conversation. Even the, the listening ability is something that we work on a lot that needs to be developed. The basic goal of a conversation class is to lead up to a real life scenario where they can use their own thoughts and their own ideas. Um, for example, um, 
a restaurant, a very common, <laughs> very common scene. Um, to equip them, if, if they don't have the vocabulary, obviously equip them with the vocabulary needed to converse in a restaurant. But then exactly. the idea is to set up a scenario for them to understand they're now in a restaurant, to create an environment as close to the real thing as possible mm -hmm. in the classroom. So I'll go so far as to, to make menus and sometimes mm -hmm. even set up um, actual food that they can order. Wow, okay. And, and bring that into the classroom. <laughs> so you make your yep. own mini restaurant, your own mini scenario for them to practice their language. Mm -hmm. And then you assign roles. You can have waiters and customers and switch roles. Okay, okay. What are some of the things that your um, TESOL students, the your English teachers that you're training, what are the mistakes that they make? Um, number one is is talking too much. Okay. The student the, the, teachers talk too much. Trying to explain things, maybe being too wordy, not simplifying their language enough. But the more the t time the teacher spends talking in a classroom, the, the less effective the lesson tends to be. The, the class I'm doing this interview for, we are students in, um, we're, we're, our major is English communications. So many of us are interested in English teaching as a future career. What would you tell us? I think just just being able to really connect with and identify um, with with your students, and even so far as to learning their language, if you're in a foreign country, um, as a way of just you yourself being a student alongside of mm -hmm. them, keeping you fresh in your mind the struggles that they're facing in learning a new language. I see. And um, also speaking of respect to them um, by identifying with and learning about their culture and language as well. So, so you're talking about respecting students, you're talking about being a language learner yourself so you can connect with them. And before that you were saying that um, the more time you spend teaching in a class or speaking in a class, the less effective you're probably going to be as, as a language teacher. This seems kind of like you're flipping on its head the way we traditionally think about education and the role of the teacher. I think there's a big difference in general education and in language learning. Hmm. Um, but there again, maybe our general education techniques aren't all they're cracked up to be sometimes either. 